grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. I'm Pastor Jonathan Lamb here at Christ United Methodist Church in Shenandoah, Virginia. The title of my sermon today is uh, Jesus is Divine, Part 1. This is Sunday, April 29th, 2018. Our scripture lesson comes from John, chapter 15, verses 1. 18. And these words come from the New International Version. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He who cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean. Because the word I've spoken to you, remain in me, and also I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I've called from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And this is my commandment. Love each other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 1976, Rocky the movie came out in theaters. The movie sold, um, told the story of Rocky Balboa who was a local boxer in Philadelphia who struggled to make a living. That's when a well-known boxing champion, Apollo Creed, had the opportunity uh, or had an opponent back out a few weeks before the match due to an injury. This caused Creed to seek out a fight with a local boxer who turned out to be Rocky. What we witness in this film is a retelling of the story of David versus Goliath scenario with Rocky being the underdog. We can visualize seeing him run and hearing the, Rocky's music as he trains for the upcoming match. He had to use discipline in all of his training to prepare for what was coming ahead. Interestingly, the first Rocky movie was also seen as an underdog in theaters as it cost little over a million dollars to produce and made $225 million in the box office office becoming the biggest blockbuster of that year. Sylvester Stallone, who played Rocky, also wrote the script. He was a struggling actor in Hollywood who was inspired to tell the story after watching Muhammad Ali fight Chuck Webber, one of the greatest boxers of all time, fighting an unknown fighter. Webber knocked down Ali and endured 15 rounds of fighting against one of the greatest boxers ever. 
this almost unknown fighter, Webner, for a moment had an advantage over a legend. Stallone saw this fight and it inspired this, the character in the story of Rocky. Rocky is a character that, is, that speaks from the heart. And just by watching this movie, you want the underdog to win as he prepares with his self-discipline for the challenge ahead. In our scripture lesson, we find Jesus sharing with his disciples what is known as the farewell discourse, his final teachings as he prepared for his crucifixion. I believe Jesus' teachings at this point in the Gospel of John were seen as words of importance for the early church as they remembered the events around Easter, the resurrection. In this passage, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. I find it interesting that Jesus compares himself to a vine. The grapevine was well known in the, as an agricultural plant in the Mediterranean world. And it was used in making of wine, which was an important resource in the ancient world for purifying water. The image of the vine has been used by the Old Testament prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel. They use the image to describe the people of God. Jesus says um, he is the vine, while the branches are all those who believe in him. There are two kinds of branches that are connected to the vine, and those who are fruitful, and those that are not fruitful. Jesus desires that God the Father, as the gardener, for it tells us that he cares for the vine. In order to bear fruit, the branches need to remain connected to the vine who is Jesus. No branches can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. With the power of God, Jesus can help us do many things. Without Jesus, we simply are not able to be fruitful or effective. That's because the life of the disciples and all of us who follow Jesus is made only possible through Jesus. Staying connected to Jesus reminds us of the mission that Jesus gave us to carry out the good news across the globe. As we are reminded that Jesus began his ministry with this announcement in the Gospel of Mark. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The first disciples were called or to hear this good news, that the kingdom of God and to, to change their ways for God, to turn. And that remains our calling as disciples today. Branches that have been separated from the vine and withered were pulled out by the garden. This was done so that the vine could grow new branches, could grow and eventually bear more fruit. Even those branches that bear fruit from time to time need to be pruned. I can imagine that pruning can hurt and is not fun. This can be moments in our lives when we wonder, why does these things happen? Why do we need to be pruned? Why does it hurt so much? However, being pruned provides space for us to grow and to become more fruitful. Pruning requires a lot of work and discipline to build up. And this provides a space to continue to grow. As we follow Jesus, we're to continue to grow and become more fruitful as Christians. All the branches that are withered are picked up and thrown into the fire as they are no longer able to bear fruit. I remember one of my professors in seminary telling me that this passage uses what's known as Asiatic logic, a very big word. It's basically a very different way of having a thought process than what we in the Western European society can think of. We like our subject paragraph, another subject in the following paragraph. And so-and-so, subject A, B, C, will have each of their own paragraphs. Instead, Jesus takes several themes 
and wraps them together like a vine. So Jesus is spinning and talking about prayer. He's talking about discipleship and loving each other. And he comes back to prayer again. And he goes again talking about discipleship and loving each other. And he addresses prayer yet again in this circular fashion as he continues this discourse. This week and next week, we'll be witnessing and hearing Jesus explain what it means to live out being a disciple of his. Jesus continues to speak words of hope and saying, If you remain in me and my word remains in you, then you will be fruitful. These words are true that if you ask anything in the name of Jesus that furthers the work of of the kingdom of God here on earth, it will be done. That is, your wishes will be carried out as they align with the wishes of Jesus who prays in heaven. This is not the prosperity gospel of us getting what we want and receiving what we want. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that we hear from God to have his heart and compassion for others, for a broken and hurting world that's in need of healing. As prayer is necessary for the vital discipleship and faith that is fruitful, our greatest example in prayer is that of Jesus, who taught his disciples how to pray through the Lord's Prayer that we say together each Sunday. Jesus continues to guide our prayers from the right hand of God and the Father's throne today. Wherever you feel that your prayer, even if you feel that your prayers have fallen short, remember that Jesus is the editor of our prayers and brings them before God for our sake. Jesus is going to help us live out the gospel. When we pray, practice discipline, spiritual disciplines, and love your brother and your sisters in faith. When we do this, we grow and become more fruitful. Now, in living out these actions will help us bear much fruit, which will be to the glory of God the Father. When others see the fruitfulness, we can give glory to God for these amazing feats. As Rocky Balboa's discipline prepared him for the challenge that was ahead for him, so does our spiritual disciplines. Prayer and love for our fellow Christians help us to grow. So let us continue to persevere and seek out growing with God in the days ahead. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for Jesus being the vine that keeps us connected to you. Help us to faithfully follow you and to remain in you so we can bear much fruit to your glory. We pray this in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.